Okay, this is a test recording. This is not a full recording of the experiment. I have two webcams up, this one, and I can also probably fire up the other one. Uh, let's see if I can do that. Switching to the other camera. And let's see if it'll do it. Hello. No? Maybe? Maybe. Maybe not. Okay. Store defaults. Nope. It's not letting me go back to this one. That one's working. Is there a webcam here? There is. Hello. There's our webcam for the 615. And this is connected up to um, the other camera that, that's connected up. And then now we get this one back. And this one is working just fine. Good. We have a two field of view. So let me begin. This is a little experiment called Ohm's Law. And the objective is not only to test out um, the behavior of resistance, we're going to apply Ohm's Law to determine resistance, and then we're going to determine the functional resistance, the functional dependence of resistance in terms of length and area. The equipment we're going to use, uh, let me show you my other webcam for just a second. This let me just flip the cam up, is my DC power supply. Um, it is a non-brand DC power supply, goes from zero to 30 volts. Um, pretty nice little power supply. Um, works Has worked very, very well for years, so we're gonna use that for our experiment. Um, the other thing that I have to show you is we're going to connect up by a vernier interface instead of a um instead of an io lab because frankly we need a lot higher current than what we're going to get from the io lab so let me just show you that this is my lab quest mini and i'm going to use both a voltage and a current sensor to sense the current and the voltage that's going through this resistor now, you can look up the color codes uh, on the internet, and let me just flip my camera one more second so you can get a good view of that. And of course, you can stop the recording at any time. That's the beauty of um, we doing labs on tape. Um, but here is the resistor that we're going to use. It's kind of a big one. It's like a 30 watt resistor. So um, it should take quite a bit of abuse. Now, the first thing we're going to do, and I don't have the ability to do this at this point, is to draw a circuit diagram. So the circuit diagram is going to look, let me just connect things up first, and then we'll do the circuit diagram. So I have here, let's see if I can find those, there they are. I have here a vernier current sensor. Um, it is supposed to measure current going through anything. Now, the interesting side of doing using a current uh, a current sensor is you have to go through the current sensor. So, in other words, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to connect the first part of this sensor. Let me just do this. So, I'm going to take a short red wire, connect it to my power supply here. There's my DC power supply. And I'm going to connect the other side to my current sensor. So there we are. And now I'm going to take the other side of this. So the other side of this current sensor is going to have um, some banana, some connector to it. And I'll just use a common garden variety uh, alligator clip that you can get from the science stores for a lot of money. I'll hook this up to a, um, da -da 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 -da. where is my thing? I will hook it up to a cable going from red. So that's going from the black 
of my current sensor into <clears throat> my power supply. So this is my red and yes it's going from the black it's going from the negative of the current probe into the resistor here. Okay? So now I have to hook I have to do one other thing. It's a lot of wires and that's kind of annoying, but we'll have to get used to that. Sometimes with sensors that's just the way it is. There are wireless ones of course, but they're a little pricey, so we'll leave this alone and just work with what we have. So here I have my I my device. I'm going to hook it in. So now this is connected to my um, digital to analog converter. That's my uh, that's my LabQuest device. So I'm going to put that off to the side for just a second. Sorry. Okay. So now I need another cable that is going to go from the resistor, and I'm going to have to alligator clip it. So I will do that. Let me grab the other one. There we go. Now, I have no idea what this resistance is. And as a matter of fact, we could probably figure it out with the color code diagrams that are available on the web and in your textbook. However, I'm just not going to play with that for the time being. I actually want to determine the resistance experimentally. So I'm going to do that. So now you have my black negative going to my resistor here and so now i've completed the circuit so there's one other thing i have to do i have here another sensor which i will call a voltage sensor let me get it out of the bag and it's going to connect to my dac in the same way that it that the other one is connected to so i'm going to flip over to my other camera there we go so there's my other camera and I don't think I can make it bigger than I have to. So I'm just going to move it off to the side. Can you guys see it okay? I hope you can. Um, so here you can see the circuit from a different angle. And so now I'm going to take my voltage sensor. That's this guy. And you can see that it has two clips. Whoops, let me go over to the other camera. Uh, da, 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 da. Here we go. Okay, so it has two clips. I don't know if you can see that. These are two clips. And what we're going to do is we're going to take, we want to go across the resistor. So I'm going to connect one part, the red, to the red here. And that's a little heavy. So I'm going to connect the black over here and so now we have a connection so I can take this into my um, LabQuest Mini, my little LabQuest device and I am going to connect it into the other port, another port so let me show you that there's a lot of wires, a lot of wires. I'm sorry about that, but we'll have to live with it. So I'm going to connect this also to my second port. There we go. I'm going to push this out of the way, try and clean up some of the wires so that it doesn't look like a complete disaster. There we go. And so now I have a voltage sensor and a current sensor on this little circuit. The circuit is basically a resistor, a power supply going from here into the current sensor. Then the current sensor goes into the, the positive side of the resistor. The negative side comes out and goes to the negative side of the power supply. Power supply is not on. You can see that. I'll just adjust my camera accordingly. Um, so you can see that it's a little tangled up, but that's okay. We'll live. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the power supply. Now, caution. If you ever get to do this by hand yourself, one of the rules of dealing with power supplies, this is only 30 volts, but it can crank out a couple of amps. 
and a couple of amps is enough to give you a very nasty shock. So I am very cautious with that. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the voltage, make sure all the voltages are to the right, all the dials are set to zero, as you can see. And so now I'll power up my voltage, my, my system. And as you can see, it's zero, zero. And what I'll do is I'll push this a little. No, I'm not going to do that. Okay, so we I've shown you how to hook this up. In the next video, because I'm going to do this in parts, uh, I'm going to show you how to take the data for this. Okay, so we'll be talking in a few minutes. Thank you for watching.